this video, I want to talk about the extended uh, body model versus a point particle model. And this uh, concept is very important in, in physics, okay? Um, uh, I'm just br going to briefly touch on the idea and the main uh, f focus that you need to know about this, okay? So, let's look at a little problem here. Let's analyze it, okay? So, I have a spring. I have initially I have a, two blocks connected by a spring, and it just applies some sort of force. It so happens that I moved this block a little bit, and obviously this block moved a little bit. So, we created new two positions. So, my question to you is, you know, as a point particle model, how much work is done? And this is where this becomes very important, and, and this is where you can explain the difference, okay? So, if I'm looking at this, we know generic formula for work. We know the work is equal to the force dotted into the change in displacement, okay? And so, well, what is my displacement? Well, again, this is where it becomes very important. It becomes very important. When we talk about, as a point particle system, we talk about the change in the displacement of the center of mass. That, that's the only thing we care about. We care about how the center of mass moves. And so if I'm looking at this, if I'm looking at this, we have some sort of final. So this is our final, there's your initial. So we know the change in displacement is always final minus initial. But displacement of what? Is a displacement of the center of mass. And so the center of mass of the object, as we squish it down as a point particle system, we're squishing these two blocks and the spring down to just one dot. And so that's what constitutes a point particle model. And so if I'm looking at this, the center of mass will be actually smack dead right in between the middle of each of these. The center of mass will be smack dead right in between the middle. And so you could imagine if it's smack dead in between the middle, all I'm doing is taking the average to find the, the initial uh, center of mass of the object as a point particle model. And so, well, we know X, in this case, initially, this is zero, and we know it stretches to X2. Well, in order to find the center, we're going to take x0 plus x2 and just divide it by 2. Well, x0 is just 0, okay, but x2 is 0 0.4. So if we take 0 .04, well, 0 0.04 plus 0 and divide those by 2, yeah, we get the initial displacement. We take the initial position of center of mass to be 0 0.02 meters, okay? Now, what about this one? Now that we have two numbers and not 0, well, x1... Well, that's what happens to be 0 0.02. So if I take x1, 0 0.02, plus x3, 0 0.13, and I divide that by 2, I get the, this, I get the position of the center of mass is 0 .7, 0 0.075 meters. Okay? And so you can imagine the change in displacement of the center of mass would actually be 0 0.075 minus 0 0.02. Okay? And so in this case, we get the force we get the work to be the force which they gave us, which is 7 newtons. Okay, so we get 7 newtons multiplied by 0 0.055 meters. Okay, and so if you multiply this by 7, you can see that the work done on the system as a point particle system is actually 0 0.385 joules. Okay. So again, we care about where the displacement of the center of mass as a point particle system. Now, my question to you is, as an extended body system, how much work is done? Well, now it's different. We care about where the force is being applied. In the extended body system, we care about where the force is being applied. Exactly where the force is being applied. And so if I look at the object, I see that my force is being applied to block two and block two. So we'll look at it from an extended body system. And so we know the work is equal to the force times a change in displacement in this is center of mass. But uh, so this is the force times the work change in displacement. But because we care about where the force is being applied, as an extended system, we take x3 and minus that from x2 because we care about where the force is being applied. And so we know x3 is 0 0.13. If we subtract that from x2, which would be 0 0.04. We know that as an extended body system, the object actually moved 0 0.09 meters. Okay. We know the force again is 7 newtons. And so we multiply that, we get 0 0.63 joules. So again, you can notice the difference. And that's a strikingly big difference with extended versus 
um, point particle system that I want you to realize. Also, another important concept I want you guys to realize is that point particle systems, as a point particle model, we only have uh, translational kinetic energy. Okay, we only have translational kinetic energy, how the center of mass moves. Okay, so that's very important. Now, when we talk about the extended model, we have a whole new game, okay? Because we care about where the force is being, be, being applied. In this case, you could see that if we treat this as an, as an extended model, you could see that we still have translational kinetic energy. All right, EN for energy. We still have translational kinetic energy, but look, we also have spring potential energy. Okay, the spring potential energy actually changed. Okay, so we have spring, I'm gonna just write potential energy. And what else do we have? Well, we also have vibrational energy. Okay, we also have vibrational uh, kinetic energy in this case, uh, vibrational. K E N. Okay, so vibrational kinetic energy. So, did I want you to know exactly what energies are present here? No. But what? what but, but what is my point? My point is, as a point particle model, we'll only have translational kinetic energy. As an extended, now we gotta look at exactly where those forces are being applied. And so, if I'm looking at that, there's gonna be more than just translational kinetic energy. Okay. So that's a big striking difference between the point part treating an object as a point particle system versus an extended. Extended, we care about where the force is being applied. Displacement of where the force is being applied versus a point particle model, we care about that, that center of mass, the displacement of how the center of mass moves.